Night falls as innocence and evil roam the streets in disguise. Hello, freaks and free thinkers. This is Radio Ghost Town, and I'm your host, Deep Amber, coming to you from the relative safety of an undisclosed location. Tonight, we continue our ongoing series, The Serpent Whispers, investigating and exposing the greatest conspiracy in the history of the world. Well, put on your flannel shirts and pour yourself a pumpkin spice something because it's that time of year again. Tonight, we'll expose one of the serpent's favorite strategies used to befuddle and beguile while advancing his master plan. And we'll answer once and for all the age old question. You don't really think Halloween is satanic, do you? In fact, we'll do that one first. Yes, it's in their literature. For Satanists, Halloween is Satan's birthday. For witches, it's the greatest holiday, the day of death, the day of the horned god. Anton LaVey, founder of the Church of Satan, an erstwhile carnival sideshow organist, famously said of Halloween, I'm glad that Christian parents let their children worship the devil at least one night out of the year. Now, long before Anton and his comic opera Satanism set up shop in the 1960s, the ancient pagans celebrated All Hallows' Eve. The night's revels included bonfires, divination, jack-o'-lanterns filled with burning human fat, costumes, treats for the spirits, blood sacrifices, and the unlucky were compelled to bob for apples in boiling water. So yes, satanic. Now that that's out of the way, let's put some pins in the old conspiracy board. In another century, not terribly long ago, a superior generation sent their younglings out into the gathering gloom dressed in adorable handmade costumes. There was no fear of drug-laced candy, no rumors of razor blades and apples. It was an innocent autumn ritual, and the innocence was itself a sort of disguise. You see, for the longest time, we as human beings knew two things beyond a shadow of a doubt. One, there are supernatural forces at work in the world not to be taken lightly. And two, devils, demons, warlocks, witches, and sorcerers, and those who run with them are our deadly enemies. This is truth, taught us by our ancestors, who at varying times found themselves at odds with the occult practitioners of the ancient mystery schools, who seeing their neighbors incinerated in druid bonfires or their children slain on Aztec altars, passed down a warning. But by the time poor old Darwin was shuffling through the world, hands in pockets, staring at finches, a movement was underway. The goal of which was to completely sever human consciousness from the supernatural. Paxis were selected, outsiders from the real scientific elite who could sell the lie that what you see is what you get. Awareness of the true light had to be removed so a false light could later be substituted in its place. Enter the anti-reality dogma of secular humanism. Schools and universities taught it as gospel, effectively sweeping millennia of human experience and knowledge under the rug. It was a cunning scheme, and it worked. The superstitious and soon after the religious were looked down on as uneducated rubes. We were plunged into darkness. Well played, serpent, well played. Now that we no longer believed in the invisible, because science, we became vulnerable to attack. One cannot defend oneself from a monster one refuses to believe is there. Even the church found itself awash in a sort of Christianized humanism, which either reduced the Bible to allegory and metaphor or used the eternally lame, that was then, this is now argument. As if the Lord of Darkness had, upon the invention of the electric light bulb, grown despondent and gone into retirement. The 20th century gave us a world increasingly blind to the serpent's activities and increasingly inhospitable to God. You can't tell the players without a scorecard, and when both sides of the battle are reduced to imaginary fluff, the distinctions between them become eventually meaningless. The first step was to disavow reality and effectively erase the supernatural from humanity's consciousness. Don't be scared, little Susie. There's no such thing as monsters. Now, the second step begins. If devils and demons and monsters aren't real, then there's no danger in playing with them. It's all fairy tales and hokum, after all. Evil had to become the ultimate myth before it could be reintroduced as the ultimate good. 
They cannot disprove truth, so they mock and deride it. Wait until it's forgotten, and then fill the aching void it left behind with a carefully crafted lie. Yes, it's all fun and games until someone loses their immortal soul. Enter the 1964 sitcom Bewitched, starring television's first but far from last, sweet, lovable, and innocent practitioner of the dark arts. Turns out the series was backed by actual occultists. Hmm. Soon, children who grew up hearing, there's no such thing as witches, proved their uninformed but well-meaning parents wrong. They became witches. They became other things as well, and generation by generation, the curse has grown. Bewitched normalized witchcraft, and suddenly they're telling us that vampires, blood-sucking, corpse-like predators, are sexy, fascinating heroes. Then zombies and serial killers became the main characters of television dramas. Now cannibals and sociopaths are the good guys. The Serpent even arranged a starring role for himself in a self-titled TV show that ran from 2016 to 2021, making the filthy, lying murderer from the beginning scrape him off the bottom of my boot, enemy of mankind, seem like he's a pretty cool guy who's a hit with the ladies and a lot of fun to be around. The serpent played the long con, and it paid off big time. This perverted worldview is called Gnostic inversion, and it's everywhere. Pay attention, and you'll see it. The monsters are presented as desirable. They will be more caring, more intelligent, more loving, and or attractive than the so-called good guys. The roles traditionally looked on as good will be made to appear petty, heartless, ignorant, and or just plain boring. In fact, how many stories can you name where a fundamentalist, Bible-believing Christian, I did not say Catholic, is treated by the story with respect, where they're not humiliated, or vilified, or made to look weak, stupid, or irrelevant. And at the risk of repeating myself, a movie about three naughty witches who eat little kids does not teach a good moral, as one commentator recently said, if the witches are everyone's favorite part. Learn the difference between the lesson they pretend to teach you and what you're really being taught. It is a vital distinction. What is the story really saying? Open your eyes. First, they teach us that the supernatural is fake and dumb. So not wanting to be dumb, we all simply stop believing. Then, when we're stumbling through the dark, off balance and open to attack, they come back with new programming. The supernatural is fun and harmless make-believe, except Faith in Jesus Christ, that's still bad, but everything else is up for grabs. Come one, come all, dabble to your heart's content, bring the kitties. And now that that programming has sunk in and we're all dabbling in the occult to varying degrees, they're changing the narrative yet again. Have you noticed? The true scientific elite are tiptoeing out of the closet, hinting around that maybe the invisible realm is real after all. Oopsies. Maybe our natural world is part of a supernatural universe. The omniverse, the power of the mind, alternate dimensions, aliens, CERN, and just like that, we've come full circle. We're back where we started, but without our moral compass, no scorecard to tell our enemy from our champion, and it turns out the scientists we trusted above our own instincts, our ancestors and experiences, were sorcerers in disguise all along. It's a massive reset back to pre-Christian paganism with the ancient mystery schools running the world. They are altering our understanding of reality, slowly, by degrees, in defiance of natural laws and historic truth. Children know from birth that monsters are bad. They run from monsters, but what are they being reprogrammed to believe now? These terrifying beings that stalk you, hurt you, prey on you are good. Do not fear the predators, little one. Let them walk beside you, touch you, take you away. Teach you how to twerk at drag queen story hours and school-sponsored drag show events. I'm sorry to tell you this, freaks and freethinkers, but they're coming for you, and they're after your children. 
Our only hope is to hop out of the boiling cauldron now and try to reclaim what little of our sanity is left. Evil is only ever evil. And despite our failings, our rebellion, our treason and adultery, God remains patient, loving, and eternally good. Now, for the record. Satan is alive and active in the world today. He is your mortal enemy with just one goal, to destroy you, body and soul. The good news is we have a champion. His name is Jesus. Jesus is the only way to God, and the Bible is our only source for absolute truth. Together, they're our only hope for salvation. I'm Deep Amber, and this is Radio Ghost Town. Thanks for watching. At Flyby Light Media, we choose freedom over comfort and truth over popularity. We hope you will too. You can also buy some cool tees and hoodies like this one through the link in the description. And please be sure to check out more videos. Together, we are Flyby Fly Light, Light Media, Media and we rise to shine. shine.